Just a normal hummingbird day, flying around and eating some flowers. Oh well, not quite so, as this giant spider appears out of the nowhere, not only hunting the hummingbird, but also hunting me in my dreams. Hey, what's up, my name is Toby and be very welcome to this development vlog. So today I'm going to show you the progress I've been making with my little hummingbird augmented reality games. So not only did I add the enemy AI spider, I also completely reworked the collection system, improved meshing, as well as did some under the hood performance improvements so the game just runs smoother. So before we're gonna get right into the new features, I just wanted to say thank you because I've got a lot of mails and comments from people being excited about the uh, game that I'm developing and also asking about more information. So I decided that I'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial series on how to create a whole augmented reality game which has the same functionality and is similar to the one that you are watching right here. So be a little bit more patient with me and uh, very soon there will be the first tutorials out so you guys can begin creating your own augmented reality application with the Lightship ARDK3. Going back in time, I showed you guys this footage, which was a 24 hour challenge where I just wanted to see how fast I can create an augmented reality game that could be a potential prototype. And building this game, I kind of grew on the idea to have a hummingbird as my main character, as I also watched some documentary series and hummingbirds are actually quite interesting animals, so I kind of read about them watch a few more videos and I found out that they actually fly to uh, spider webs and actually steal some of the spider's web to build their nests, which is quite interesting and quite risky as well. So I thought, hey, maybe I could actually just grow on the idea and keep on building a game that might describe a bit the, the actual life and the behavior of a hummingbird. So that's what I'm currently doing. And I kind of got intrigued by this little but very special creatures. So based with that knowledge, I decided to add an enemy to um, the scene, which would be a spider defending basically her web. And so I got the spider model from the Unity Asset Store from the low poly animated animals pack. They are pretty good for AR purposes as the quality is quite nice, but they are also um, very performant. So next up I set up a little test scene where the spider was basically my agent following the bird and I originally used some A star pathfinding but I had some issues as you can see here because of the live meshing going on the um, actual navigation wasn't that great so in the end I ended up using just a normal nav mesh agent system that is provided within the standard version of Unity. So then I wanted to create a behavior for the spider and I created this whiteboard on something called a whimsical where I just wanted to quickly uh, iterate over all the different states that the enemy would go through. Uh, but the actual script, as you can see, got a little bit more complex than that. So basically the spider has a view radius and uh, depending on whether the hummingbird is within that radius it will just start attacking but it also has some limited stamina so after some time we'll, it will just go back and if it can get close to the hummingbird so if you're for example sitting on a flower or are too close to the ground picking up something then it can bite you and also hurt you. So doing some first testing, I actually had some pretty big performance issues. This was not due to the spider, but rather because I uh, kept on live meshing all the time. So basically the uh, playing field was expanding or changing during the, the game. So I had to do some performance improvements by writing a script. You would begin by scanning the environment and if you're happy with your playing field, you can just click start and it will also not change anymore in the future. It's not as flexible as with live meshing on all the time, but with live meshing continually trying to expand the playing field, there will be huge performance issues. So that's definitely a learning I got from this, uh, this development time. So then I built the collection system and to keep it a bit more true to life I introduced the three new collectible items which are the twigs, I call them branches, 
than the spider web as well as the leaves. So this is the actual material that a hummingbird would fly around, collect and then build a nest out of it. So the first thing I did is was creating this static collectible data script, which is just a static script holding um, all the data for the collectibles as well as uh, potential data for the flowers, as you can see here on the right, um, it's just a list and also the UI images. And um, that's basically it. So it, it just holds data and passes them on to the next scene and seen as it's a non-destroy on load. So next up there's the spawn plan prefabs and this is the one that just spawns the flowers but now it will also spawn the uh, bushes and the trees. So after it's decided whether we got a tree, a bush or a flower, then there are other scripts that will spawn the collectible items. And for example, in this one, the um, spawn leaf on mesh script just fetches the information whether we're actually having um, a mesh that is by incidence a bush. And if this is true, then it will spawn a leaf on that mesh and if not, if for example, a flower uh, is just on that mesh, it will do nothing. And if, if, if there's a tree on the, on the mesh, another script will spawn a branch, but there's also no leaf spawn. So that we have a kind of random, semi-random um, collection of uh, items spread it on the whole mesh. So then there's the find closest collectible script, which is attached to the player and not to the mesh. And the script will start with collecting data. So this instance that is created in the main menu will just bring over all the data and we will store it in a list, which will then allow us to know which data, which kind of objects are actually supposed to be collectible. And this is a great system because later on we can just add more collectibles to the whole system with very low effort. So then in the start method, we will first, um, of course, instantiate this particle system and which is um, indicating that you can collect something. And then we will start the populate list of collectibles. So that means that we'll just create a list with um, all the possible attacks. For example, a flower is, has the tag flower collectible or a branch has the tag, tag branch collectible and a new list of, of game objects which will then store all the actual uh, spawned instances. So next up, what we will do with the get all collectibles is we will go through all the meshes that exist and then just find out whether there are some branches or leaves spawned on that, um, spawned on that mesh and add it to our list to the corresponding tag. So then we will just only calculate which is the closest one of these in the list and we will see if they are in range. And that's, that's about it for the script. So mixing up everything together, I also added a little main menu and an end screen. And what you see here is the actual most recent gameplay footage where you can just start a game or you can also basically um, change the color as you could see and um, collect your collectibles. If you get everything, then you are the winner. And um, so one more thing I added is that when you lose stamina, you will actually get a bit slower every time. So you need to decide whether you want to sip on that flower, get more stamina, get more energy, get faster, or you want to collect your stuff. Um, but if you get slower, then of course the spider will uh, quickly catch you. And if it stings you, you will lose a hell lot of stamina. So that's the actual gameplay loop, having all the systems, the collectible system, the spider behavior, then the stamina, which will decide um, whether you're still alive or not. So maybe some of you guys watching have seen that I've been working on this multiplayer ship game a bit earlier um, in my development vlogs. And that, I just wanted to quickly give an update on that because uh, I've, I've just kept doing this hummingbird game now. So in my opinion and my experience, um, which is not that much, but a little bit, I've been doing uh, development uh, with Unity since about nine months now. It's always, there's always sometimes the situation where you can decide to just push through with your current approach or you will just pivot a bit and maybe need to do some adaptions. 
depending on your situation. In my case, I was just working on this multiplayer game, um, which was quite fun, but also it was super hard for me to test because um, the only way of testing this game was actually to deploying it on two phones and then just go outside basically and test whether it works. That means that every single line of code I couldn't test within the editor, which was quite a pain in the ass. And especially since about 50 to 60% of my time I work in the train uh, on my way to my uh, current work and going back, I, I couldn't bear, I could barely test anything. And when I come home, it's already dark. So that's already, that's also not such a great thing um, to test. Um, to test the stuff. And furthermore, the <clears throat> solution in the ARDK 2.5.2 for multiplayer was quite special so that you had to decide whether you want to do multiplayer or single player game, but you couldn't do both very easily. So you couldn't start with just doing a single player game and then later on add multiplayer functionality, um, which might be a little bit different with the new Unity um, netcode stuff. So for these reasons, <clears throat> I decided to just go back a little bit and think about a new approach. And I came up with the hummingbird idea, which I also like a bit more actually than those, those ships, because it has also like some kind of educational approach. All right, so that's it for this video. So summarize some progress I made. There will be some new tutorials and why I didn't continue the uh, the ship game. I hope you really enjoyed this video and I always enjoy to read your mails and comments a lot. Be patient with me if I can't answer them directly as I still have just a normal day job, which I do. Um, but I'll always try to get back at you guys. It's a pleasure for me to um, being able to help someone. So I'm really excited that you actually find this interesting. So yeah, I hope this will keep on going very positive. And with that said, have a nice day, evening, night, morning, or whatever the time might be that you're watching this. And see you next time.